How to Sew the Velvet Weekender in beautifully illustrated super soft velvet in a choice of prints. It has a contrast cotton lining, a double slider zip and is the perfect bag for an overnight stay, a weekend away or just filling with your essential items. Cutting out. Take the printed velvet panel out of your kit and you will see that all the pieces are labelled with small labels above each one. You need to cut around all of the pieces and pin the labels to the top of them so you remember which is which. Those are the bag end linings and the handles and the front and back. All of the panels have extra pieces printed on. These are just small illustrations or fabric pieces you can use for your own makes. If they don't have a label, they're not used for the bag. They're just some extras for you to use. Once you've cut it all out like this, you'll have the bag front outer and the bag back outer. You can see I've pinned the labels to the top of them. Here are the two handle pieces. The velvet's really easy to cut out and it doesn't fray. There's the shoulder pad outer and the shoulder pad lining and the zip tab outers. And then here are the extra piece of fabric that you can just use for your own make. So just put that to one side. And then here are the two bag out end outers. Now you need to mark the top and bottom of these before you go any further. It just helps if you do it at this stage for positioning when you join it together later. So find the top of it, but you can use the, follow the print on the design to find the very top of it and then fold it in half so that all the raw edges match up. And then the opposite side of that fold, if you mark that with a pin, that will be the centre of the bottom. I placed a ruler on mine to find the top so that I placed it across the centre of the printed designs. And then if you do that with the same one, then you've marked the top and the bottom. Next, take the lining fabric that comes in your kit. This is a metre of cotton lining fabric and it's really easy to cut out the pieces because you just use the outer pieces as templates. So give it a good press and lay it out flat right sides up and then place the bag front outer and the bag back outer on top and pin them both into place and then just cut round the edges of them so you've got the template so there's no measuring because these use the outer pieces as templates. So there's the front outer and the back outer. Just leave a small gap between them. There's plenty of lining fabric. But I always find it's easier if you pin everything into place first before you do any cutting out and then you can make sure it all fits nicely. Now place the two ends on. So you've got the front outer and the back, the, back, the two bag end outers. Place those onto the lining fabric again. Make sure it's all nice and flat and pin it into place. There's a section here that you use for cutting out the pockets and the measurements for this are listed in the instructions. So just follow those measurements to cut out the two pocket pieces and then you'll need to cut out two zip tabs as well. Once that's all cut out, you need to mark the centre of the top and bottom of the lining. So if you just mark where that pin is at the top. I've made a little mark and then put a pin in. It's best if you put a pin in just in case if you're using an erasable pen the marks disappear so just mark the top and bottom. If you do that at this stage it makes the assembly easier later because you've got all the the centre marks done. So now I've marked my two. Now do label the pieces. I've just written labels and pinned those on just because I like to remember which piece is which. And there's the other bag end lining. There's the two pocket pieces, the front and the back that I've cut earlier, and the two zip tab linings as well, and the bag front lining and the bag back lining. In your kit, you will also have two zips. You'll have a zip for the pocket and a double slider zip, and that's used for the top of the bag for easy access. Making the pocket. The bag has an internal pocket in the lining. So start off by taking the pocket front and turn it over so it's wrong sides up. Now measure one and a half inches down from the top edge and mark that with a pen. I'm using a heat erasable pen here, but you could use a pencil instead. 
So measure the one and a half inches down and then take a ruler and join up those two marks across the pocket. Remember, we're marking on the wrong side. Now measure and mark quarter of an inch below this. It's easier if you use a rotary cutting ruler here because you can measure the lines, but if not, just use your tape measure and join them up. Now find the centre of the pocket by folding it in half. And now you need to measure it so that the lines are seven inches long. So if you measure three and a half inches either side of this mark, I've changed the measurements since I did this. I measured that four inches, but it's important that you make it seven inches. It makes the zip fit better. So three and a half inches either side of that central line and then draw vertical lines to create a box. Now draw a diagonal line at each end going from the outer corner to that centre line. These will be your cutting lines. Now take the bag back lining and place it right sides up, making sure the top edge is at the top. That's why if you've labelled it earlier, you'll know which is the top edge. Now to find the centre of this, just fold it in half right sides together, matching up the raw edge and just finger press crease on the fold and that will just mark the centre. Now take the pocket front that you've just marked and fold it in half again if the crease isn't still there and then place it on top so that the top raw edges match and the creases match and then you can be sure it's placed exactly centrally. Then pin it into place all the way around. Now we're going to be sewing around the outer drawn box. So if you place your pins just outside that, then you won't need to move them as you're stitching. This makes it easier to stitch and also keeps it more stable as you're stitching. So if you just place them like I'm doing here, about an inch or so outside of the lines to keep it stable, but you won't need to move them. Now sew the two pieces together around the outer drawn box only. Once that's done, it will look like this and I've taken the pins out now. Now just fold it in half and make a small snip through all the layers and then open it out again and then you can put your scissors inside the snip and cut along the centre line, cut along to the end of those diagonal lines and then snip along the diagonal lines into the corner. Take care that you don't actually cut through the stitching but that you just snip into the corner. This helps to get a neater opening by having these diagonal lines because the pocket opening will be flatter. And then work along from that first snip you made to the other end and again stopping at the end of the diagonal lines and snipping along them, taking care not to cut into the stitches. Now to create the post box opening, place it on your ironing board or mat. And before you post the pocket through to the back, just open up those seam allowances and give them a press. By doing that at this stage, it just helps to get a neater edge and is a bit quicker to get the seam laying on the edge. So if you open up the little diagonal, the, the small triangles at either end as well, then just give them a nice press. Now you can post the, the pocket through to the back of the back lining. So just post it all the way through and then place it with the lining wrong sides up and you'll see now that the pocket front is right sides up and open it all out and using an iron and your fingers make sure that the seam that you've just sewn lies right on the edge. If you just pull it gently and iron it, then it will look like this and you've got a little post box opening ready to put your zip in. So take the pocket zip that comes with your kit and place it right sides up so the teeth are facing upwards and then place that pocket opening exactly on top. You'll see the zip slider is coming through. You can open it a, a little bit. You will have zip tape that extends beyond the pocket opening on either side but just make sure that those teeth are laying centrally within so you can't see the metal end and you can't see the ends of the tape. Once you're happy that the teeth are central, you can just then pin it into place. So I like to do this on my ironing board because then I can just stab the pins through to hold it into place. 
so that I can make any small adjustments and then I can actually pin it into place once I'm happy that everything's done. It's just a bit quicker than pinning it all to start with. And make sure when you put these pins in that you're actually pinning through to the zip tape at the same time. And also make sure you pin the ends of the zip tape into place as well. Because although you won't be sewing right to the ends, it helps to keep those nice and straight. So you can see everything is pinned nicely in place. Just have a quick check to make sure the zip tape is flat. I'm just going to turn it round and turn the pins round on the bottom edge. Because it's much easier if the pins are facing in the direction you're sewing. Because they're easier to take out while you're stitching. So the bottom edge, I'm just turning them round. So the ends of the pins are on the right. Now you can sew the zip into place. So starting just on the right, go stitch all the way around. You might need to move the slider as you meet it, but that's easier. Just keep the needle down and lift the foot. Now you can see the zip is all pinned into place. Trim the ends of the zip tape off so that they don't go into the edge of the lining as well. Now take the pocket back, place that right sides facing on top of the pocket front. Now pin together, but only pin through the two pocket pieces. Pin together down one side. Don't pin into the lining at all because you don't want to see this stitching from the lining. The pocket will almost be hidden and you won't be able to see it at all. It'll only be the zip that you'll see. So do make sure that you don't pin into the lining. And only pin down the sides and across the bottom. Don't pin across the top edge yet. We'll do that a bit later. And then once that's done, sew together down the side, across the bottom, like the other side. Remember, only through the pocket pieces, not into the lining. So you can see that the pocket is hanging loose here. Now to secure it at the top, pin together the three layers through the, the back lining and the pocket front and pocket back all the way along the top edge. And then tack it into place within the seam allowance because you don't want those stitches to be seen. And then we go, your pocket is now finished and you all you'll be able to see from this side is the zip and you've got a handy little pocket to keep all those essential items that will be inside the lining of the bag. Making the handles. Take one of the bag handles, you can remove the label now, and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing and match up the raw long edges and pin it together all the way along the length. You can use pins or fabric clips for this, it's up to you. But just make sure that the pins, that the raw edges are matching and pin it together all the way along the edge. I'm just folding it here, but make sure you pin it together. And then sew it together down the length. When that's done, press the seam open and flat. You can see I've done that already. And I'm going to use a turning tube to turn my right sides out. So I've tacked it together along one short end. To use the turning tube, put the tube inside all the way to the end. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to turn it right sides out. It takes a bit longer. I prefer to use a tube because it's just quicker. So put the tube all the way to the end. Now this is a long handle, so be a bit patient as it'll take a while to get it all the way through. And then take the stick that comes with your turning tube. Push that all the way through. Now you'll find because this velvet is so soft, it's much easier to turn this handle out than it is if you're using cotton fabric. It's slidier and slippery, so it turns out really nicely. So if you don't have a turning tube and you've just got to turn it right sounds out, you'll find it's a lot easier than when you're working with normal fabric. So push using the stick, push that tacked end all the way out, and then you can just pull it out and you can see how easily the handle just slides out. Now remove the tacking stitches from the end. I worked really long tacking stitches so this was easy to do because they're only there to secure the end and remove the stick and take out any of the extra stitches. Now press the handle so that the seam lays right on the edge. Use a gentle 
temperature, a low temperature, so that you don't ruin the velvet. And then, once that's done, top stitch down both long edges. As long as you lose, use a low temperature, it will be fine. And then your handle will look like this. It's nice and flat and with those top stitch edges to decorate. Make the other handle in exactly the same way as they're identical. Attaching the handles. Place the bag back outer right sides up and lying flat, so the top edges at the top. Now from the left hand side, measure four and a half inches and place a pin in to mark. You only need to just push the pin in gently because we'll be taking these out. They're just marking pins. And now along the top edge, measure four and a half inches inwards and place a pin to mark it. And then measure four or five times between these pins. They're just lines to, so that you keep your handle straight. So you can see here, I'm just measuring four and a half inches in and placing a pin all the way down. My pins are spaced about three or four inches apart. If you do this on your ironing board, then you could just push the pins into the board as well. But they're just marking pins. Now take one of the handles and make sure the seam is on the left hand side. Place that seam level with that line of pins so that the seam of the handle is four and a half inches in from the left hand side. And now because you've placed those pins it's very easy to get it straight. The bottom edge of the handle needs to be level with the raw edge of the bottom of the bag back outer. And then pin it into place. Now because you're pinning through quite a few layers of the handle it's easier if you place these pins so they're vertical. If you try to place them horizontally it's a bit difficult but if you place them vertically through the handle and into the bag back outer that will hold it in place. So just move it along as you go up to make sure that the seam is staying level with that four and a half inch mark. The designs have all been done in such a way that when the handles are placed into place, they work with the designs as well. So that the, the, the handles are actually a feature of the bag as well as used for carrying it. There we go, I'm now nearly at the top. And just paste a pin at the top as well. And now your handle is in exactly the right place. Now we're just going to make some marks to show where to put the handle. You can remove those placement pins now. If you take them out now, it's a bit easier because then you might forget them as you're sewing and then they'll be easy to sew over. So we're going to make some marks for sewing. So measure four and a half inches down from the top raw edge and draw all the way across. I'm using an erasable pen. You could put a piece of masking tape here because this is just a line for, for sewing along and then measure one and a half inches below that four and a half inch mark and again draw across horizontally. Now on the other side of the bag we're going to attach the other end of the handle so in exactly the same way measure and mark with pins four and a half inches in from the right hand side. So I'm going to just mark all the way up in the same way. And then put a pin at the top as well. I'm just going to put an extra pin here. You can judge to see how many pins you need just to make sure that you know that it's going to be level. Now take the handle, run it through your fingers to make sure it's lying straight. And then again, the seamed edge needs to lie against those pins. The bottom of the handle needs to be level with the raw edge of the bottom of the bag, back outer and the seamed edge needs to be level with those four and a half inch pins. So you can then pin it into place just like you did before. So you can see that the handle loops at the top and then the two ends are sewn to the bag. This makes the handle super strong because it's sewn into place all the way down.
and then just pin it into place. And do make sure the handle isn't twisted because you really don't want to have to undo this stitching. So what I do is, although I've run it through my fingers, once I've pinned it into place, I just have another check just to make sure before I sew that the handle isn't twisted. Now you can remove those marking pins. So just like you did with the other end of the handle, measure four and a half inches down from the top and draw a line horizontally across the handle or if you can't see it again you could use masking tape you could place a pin here to mark it if you like I just find drawing a line is easier to see now you need to sew the handles into place starting from the bottom left I've sewn them here so I'll show you I sewed up the left hand side across the top drawn line down to the bottom drawn line and across it, then diagonally up to the top right corner, across the top, diagonally down, and then I sewed all the way down the right-hand side. That gives you a rectangle box with a cross in it. If I show you on the other side, you can see the stitching more easily. So you can see how I've got a rectangle box with a cross in it, and then you sew the other end of the handle in the same way. Attach the other handle to the back front outer in exactly the same way using the same measurements and the same method. And then your handles are really neatly held in place and you're ready for the next stage. Preparing the bag zip. The bag zip is a number five zip, so it has five millimeter teeth to make it a little bit stronger for using for the top of the bag and with double sliders as well. Now take the bag zip and with the sliders in the center, trim through the teeth just inside the metal end. Because you don't want to have the metal end because you can, if you sew through that, it's not very good for your needle. So we'll cut that off. Make sure the sliders are in the middle. Now take one zip tab outer and one zip tab lining. They're exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one. And place the zip tab lining right sides up to make sure the print is showing upwards and place the cut end of the zip centrally on top matching the raw edge of the zip with the raw edge of the zip tab lining and then place the zip tab outer on top so that all the raw edges match. You've got the long edges of the zip tabs running horizontally and the short ends running vertically. Pin it into place through all layers of the tab so the zip is then sandwiched between the lining and the outer just like this. Then sew it together across the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and it will look like this. Then fold the tab outer and lining so they are wrong sides facing and matching up the raw edges along the top and pin them together. Now you need to top stitch along the bottom edge and then tack along the top edge. Go slowly when you stitch across the teeth because obviously it's a number five zip so the teeth are a little bit lot wider so just go slowly once that's done trim off the edges of the zip tab so that they are level with exactly the zip tape and then your tab is the same width as the zip tape and you've got a nice neat end on one end of the zip now we need to put the tab on the other end of the zip so to do that again make sure the sliders are in the center and you need to measure and mark the teeth need to measure from the left hand side 18 and three quarter inches. These measurements are in the instructions. So measure from one end of the tab all the way along to 18 and three quarter inches. You can see here that's just inside the metal end. Double check that that's exactly right. It's, you need to get this right so that the zip will fit inside your bag. So at that 18 and three quarter inch mark, cut across the teeth. So you can see that's just inside the metal end. Make sure it's straight. And then I always just double check again before I do any sewing to make sure that now from the seamed side of the zip tab, it measures 18 and three quarter inches. Now take your other zip tab and your other zip tab lining. Place the lining right sides up, place the end of the zip tape on top. It's exactly the same as we did the other end and then take the zip tab outer, place that right sides down on top, make sure all the raw edges are matching and pin it together. Now you can either pin, place your pins 
vertically like I'm doing, I find this a bit easier, then you don't have to go across the teeth. And it's easier to get through all layers. And then sew the layers together across the top. And the same way as we did with the other end of the zip, fold them together, wrong sides together, and tack across the top and top stitch along the bottom edge. And then trim the ends of this zip tab so they're level with the zip teeth. And now you've got a nice neatened zip with tabs either at the end and 18 and three well you'll have 18 and a half inches of zip teeth showing inserting the zip place the bag front outer right sides up and make sure the handle faces downwards and out of the way take the zip that you've just prepared and place it right sides down on top now because you've attached the zip tabs, the zip with tabs is exactly the same length as the top of the bag front outer, so it'll fit nicely. Pin it together at either end first, batching up the side and the top raw edges, and then pin together between the tab ends along the zip tape. Make sure as you're pinning that the zip tape matches up exactly with the top raw edge of the bag front outer. Because it's a slightly wider zip, you'll find it's easy enough to pin it past the zip sliders. But if you find that the zip sliders are getting in the way, just move them and slide them out of the way as you're pinning. Once that's done, tack it into place across the top within the seam allowance. So you can see I've stitched it by eighth of an inch from the edge. This is just to hold it into place. Now take the bag front lining. You can take the label off, but I put, always put the labels on so I know what the top edge is. And then place it right sides down on top, matching up the top and the side raw edges and pin it into place. Again, because you cut the lining to match the front outer, they are exactly the same size, so it will fit nicely. So pin it into place at either end first. You can use clips for this if you prefer. There's quite a few layers to get through, but I... I can get through with pins, it's fine. Just make sure your pins are nice and sharp. And then pin it together along the top. Again, make sure the raw edges of the lining are matching up with the raw edges. Because you've tacked the zip into place first to the outer, you'll find this a lot easier. If you try to sew the three layers together without tacking one first, sometimes they can shift a little bit. And particularly when using velvet, it does help to do tacking first because everything fits together nicely. Now, using a zip foot on your machine, sew it into place all the way atop. So you're working through all three layers. You will need to move the sliders out of the way as you do this, but just keep the needle down in the fabric, move the sliders, and then continue stitching. And that's the lining now sewn into place. So refold it so the lining and the outer are wrong sides facing and out of the way so that we can be working on the other side of the zip tape. So take the bag back outer, and again, place it right sides up. Make sure the handles are facing downwards. I just need to take the pins out of these. So make sure the handles are facing downwards and out of the way, and you can remove the label. Now take the other side of the zip tape, the one that you haven't stitched into, and place that right sides down on top. So this is attached in exactly the same way as with the front outer. Again, match up the raw edges on the top and the side and pin the tab into place first and then along on the other side pin the tab into place making sure the raw edges match at the top so it's very simple to insert this zip it's all about making sure that you tack pin and tack first and if you do one layer at a time you'll find it quite easy and this zip is fairly easy to insert, insert because you've put the tabs on, it lays nice and flat. And the zip tape is a little bit wider than a number three zip. So tack it into place. Do make sure that the other pieces, the front and the lining, the front outer, uh, stay out of the way while you're sewing. So now you can see I've tacked that section into place so take the bag back lining that's the one that you've got the pocket in and place that right sides down on top and in the same way as you did with the front lining make sure that you match up the side and the top raw edges and also make sure that the front lining and the front outer stay out of the way and folded downwards so that you don't stitch through them at all so pin together at either end 
and then pin together at the top. Obviously, when you get to the pocket, you'll be pinning through more layers, but the method is exactly the same. You're just sewing the lining to the outer with the zip sandwiched in between. And once that's done, again, using your zip foot, sew into place through all three layers. Now your zip is nicely sewn between the outers and the linings. So now fold, refold it so that the linings and the outers are wrong sides facing and the zip lays between. So you can see it will look like this. And you can see the zip tabs are neatly on the ends. Now what you need to do, we're going to top stitch this in a moment, but do press it first because you need to make sure that that seam is lying right on the edge. Again, use a cool iron when you're pressing the velvet and then turn it over and pull the lining out as well and give that a press just to make sure that that seam lays right on the edge. So I usually press once from one side and the other side and then flip them around and do it again just to make sure everything's lying nice and flat and then top stitch either side of the zip along the outer. So you can see here, I've got the top stitching. I actually used a different colour in my bobbin so that I couldn't see the stitching on that side to match my lining, but that's up to you. So now your zip is neatly inserted across the top of your bag, a really easy way to do it because the zip is inserted nice and flat. Stitching the base seams. The base seams are stitched together using a half inch seam allowance, which is different to the rest of the bag, but it just makes them a bit stronger. All of this information is listed in the instructions though. Now take the bag front outer and the bag back outer and place them right sides facing so that the bottom edges match up because we're stitching the base seams. Now to make sure the handles flow nicely around the bag, make sure they match up first. So if you just take the top one and roll it over, make sure that they meet exactly. You've measured and sewn them into the same places, but it is worth making sure they meet here and popping a pin in on to the side just to be sure and then pin together along the bottom. So you're matching up the bottom and the side raw edges. Make sure the lining is well out of the way and you're only working on the outer. And with the other handle, again, place one on top of the other. Make sure they match exactly and roll it back and then pop a pin in. You can use fabric clips here as well if you prefer. I'm just going to put a pin in just to the side of it to make sure that it matches up exactly and then pin it together at the side. Then you can pin together between the handles. Now sew the two together along the edge. Again, remember half inch seam allowance. So that's the base seam of the outer finished. It just gives it a little bit extra strength having the extra fabric at this stage. Then open up this seam and press it flat. It's best to do that at this stage before you go any further as it's much easier to press this seam open now rather than later. It, you will find it a little bit tricky to press the ends of the handles open and flat just because there's so much bulk. But if you open them up, then at least that's pressing the other ends of the seam flat between them. Now, once that's done, you need to join the base of the lining in the same way. But the difference is, is you need to leave a turning gap in here because this is the section that we'll be turning the whole bag right sides out through later. So if you mark the centre of one of the lining pieces, the centre of the bottom edge, I'm doing that by just folding it in half and marking it. You can measure instead if you prefer. But I've just marked a little crease for the center and then the gap needs to be eight inches so if you measure four inches either side of that center mark then you know that your gap is going to be central so once you've marked that on one of the base seams of the lining then place the two bottom edges of the lining right sides facing and make sure the raw edges on the side and the bottom edge are all matching up I always pin together either end and then pin together between. Place vertical pins in those marks and then you won't forget to leave the turning gap unstitched. And then just pop a couple of pins in between. Now sew together from one end, stopping at the turning gap, starting at the next pin and then working to the end. So you can see here, I've pressed this seam open and flat. 
And that also means I've pressed the edges of the turning gap over as well, which makes it sewing together easier later on. So that's nice, all open and flat. And then you can see I've turned the turning edges over by the half an inch and your turning gap is left and you've sewn the base seams. Attaching the bag ends. We'll go back to using a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this. So to start off, we need to find our quarter pen ends of the bag end bag outers. So place on one end the centre of the base seam on top of where the zip is. These are the two halfway points. I just pin those together just to hold for now. So the base seam needs to sit right on top of the zip teeth. If you just hold those together, then fold the fabric on the end of this outer and place a pin. And then work along to the other end, hold those that centre bit together and then the fold of the fabric on the other end, place a pin. Then you can take that holding pin out of the centre. I'm just going to move my pins because I want them on the right hand side. So these outer pins, these are two of the quarter points. And then the base seam and the centre of the zip tab where the teeth are, that's the other quarter point. So now you've mar marked the four quarter points on the end of the outer. You now need to do that on the other end of the outer. So again, place the base seam centrally on top of the zip tab. You can see where that is because that's where the teeth are. So if you run it across, just hold the zip together and then place it down. You can place it down flat. It might be a little bit easier just to make sure that you've matched the quarter points. And the reason you do this is that we're going to be sewing the circular ends into these ends of the bag. And by matching the quarter pin, points it's a lot easier to get the positioning correct and everything to line nice and smooth. Whenever you're sewing a circular edge to a straight edge it's easy if you match quarter or eighth points if you prefer. I've just marked quarter points because I feel that that's enough for this. So just move the pins so that they're on the right side. I just find that easier for positioning. And now you've got the quarter points matched on both ends of the bag outer. So take your bag end, take one of your bag end outers. Now you match the top and the bottom when you were cutting them out earlier. So if you fold it in half so that the top and bottom pins are meeting, make sure the raw edges of the circle are matching up and then put a pin on the fold at the bottom on the right hand side and put a pin in the fold at the bottom on the left hand side. and then open it out. I'm just going to move those pins just because sometimes when you put them on the, I like them on the right hand side, but also sometimes when you put them in, they're, they're not exactly laying straight. So just move those. And now you've divided that bag end outer into quarters. Repeat that to mark the other bag end outer into quarters as well. And now you're ready to sew them into place. So working on one end of the bag at the time at a time, it doesn't matter which end, with it making sure the bag is wrong sides out, place the top of one bag end outer on the section where the zip tab is. That's really important because there is a print direction on these big bag end outers. So make sure the top is placed on the end with the zip tab and match up the pins. So with the match up the base seam with the bottom pin of the bag end outer. So now we've matched up the two halfway points. Hold it together, move the pin and then pin it back together. And then match up the other two quarter points. So take the quarter point of the bag outer and then take the quarter point of the bag end outer and match them together. So what you're doing here is you're anchoring the circle to the straight edge in the quarter marks. So it's worth taking the time to do this because now you know it's laying flat, making sure that the bag end outer has the top of it at the zip tab. So again, match up those pins and then pin together. You can then remove the other pin because you don't need that one. So now it's all anchored together in quarter points. So all you've got to do now is pin together between these pins. So matching up the circular edge of the bag end outer to the straight edge of the bag outer 
just pin it together. What I like to do is pin it together in a few places a couple of inches apart just to make sure it all fits nicely and then pin together between. Now normally when you sew a circular end to a straight end you make small snips in the straight end but because this is such a big circle you don't need to do that. Also the velvet has a little bit of give in it. It's not stretchy there's just a little bit of give so you can easily you can see here how I'm pulling it slightly pulling the straight edge so it fits into the circular edge. In the same way that cotton fabric has a little bit of give, this velvet does as well. And you can see that the circular end is fitting nicely along the straight edge. So working on one quarter of a time, pin together between each of the quarter marks in the same way that you see me just do the first quarter section. And then it will look like this. And so now I've pinned the circular end into the straight end of the bag end outer. So we can stitch it together now. Now can you can see the lining is in the way. We're not going to stitch through the lining. Start stitching just outside the edge of the lining, about a quarter of an inch outside, and stop stitching a quarter of an inch before the lining. Once that's done, it will look like this. So you can see there's a gap I've left in the seam. I've sewn it together all the way round. And I've left that gap. We'll sort that out later. But that makes it easier to sew together so that you're not sewing into the lining at all. Make sure everything is nice and straight by having a look on the circular end and the straight end. And then sew the other bag end into the other side in exactly the same way. Matching quarter points. Make sure the end out is the right way up. And then sew together, leaving that gap. Now we're going to sew the linings. So in the same way, mark the quarter points on the lining outers by matching up the base seam with the centre of the zip tab. And then mark, mark the quarter point, I've already marked this, on either side. Take the bag end linings and match, mark the quarter points in exactly the same way as you did with the bag end outers. And now we're going to pin and sew the lining ends into the lining out in exactly the same way. So march, mark the top of the lining outer with the lining end and then match the bottom and match the quarter points all the way around. So it's exactly the same method that we did with the outer, the lining. Again, you can see that the lining outers are all wrong sides out because we're pinning everything right sides together. So there's matching up the bottom of the lining end with the base seam and then matching up the next quarter point. And then what you need to do is obviously match the quarter points and then pin together between those all the way round. Again, make sure that you pin just outside the outer because you don't want to sew into the outer in the same way that you did. You don't, didn't want to sew into the lining. Once you've sewn it together, it will look like this. So that there's a gap left at the outer section and I've sewn the other end into place and you can see there's a gap left in the outer section there as well. So to sew up those gaps is really simple. Place the lining and the outer together, making sure everything is flat. You can see it all comes together quite easily because everything's the same size. Pin it together across that gap and then pin the four layers together just outside the end of the seam. So where you finished the seams, just pin together just there because we're only going to sew it together across this section. So make sure everything is lying nice and flat and then start sewing just on the end of the seam. Sew all the way across through all four layers and then stop stitching on the other end of the seam. This is what it looks like when it's stitched. So you can see, see it better from this side because of the darker colour thread that I've sewn all four layers together. That closes the gap in the zip tab ends. And then repeat that on the other end. 
because it just closes the gap in that section. Finishing the bag ends. We're now going to stitch the bag end outers, the bag end linings, just to hold them in place. This is optional, but will keep the lining neatly inside. So working on one bag end at a time, I'm clipping the lining and the outer together all around the edge of the outer. So make sure as you're clipping it, you can pin it, but I prefer to use clips for this, that everything is laying nice and flat. So the round edge of the end outers and end linings with the outers attached are matched up all the way around. This holds the lining neatly inside the bag. So you'll have to rearrange it as you go. So you start at the zip tab end and I'm clipping it all the way down to the base seam and not any further. So just work round it gradually. Both of the fabrics are nice and flexible, so they will bend round. And because you've already sewn everything into place, it's a lot easier to do this because you're just going to be attaching the two together. So just work your way round, matching up those raw edges until you get to the base seams and then match up the two base seams. It's important to make sure as you're going that you push the fabrics inwards so that they're laying flat and that the raw edges are matching exactly. Now we're going to sew the two together, but it's important that you sew them within the seam allowance. So starting at the top where the zip tabs are, sew all four layers together all the way around to the bottom, but only about eighth of an inch from the edge. And you can use a longer tacking stitch for this because it really is just a holding stitch. Those stitches won't be sewn, seen from the right side at all. Once you've sewn it, it will look like this. You can see I've started on top of the zip tab and that in a line of stitching, that's just about eighth inch of the edge and I stopped at the base. I'll show you it from the lining side. You can see here that I've, it's just a tacking stitch to hold it all into place. Now working from the zip tab end, so at the top of the bag again, pin the layers together on the other side. You have to work one side at a time because you can't actually stitch it in place all the way round, otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn it right sides out afterwards. So we're going to just pin, Start. we start at the top and pin or clip all the way round the edge, making sure the raw edges are matching. Now you won't be able to clip all the way round. I worked all the way round, so it was about a quarter of a way round the bag. So there was a few inches left at the bottom, but I clipped it about a half way round from the top to the base, so a quarter of the whole circle. It doesn't mean need to be an exact measurement is just enough to hold that lining inside the bag. Otherwise, you'll find that when you open your bag, the lining keeps flapping outwards. And this is just a nice, neat way. But again, remember, these stitches won't be seen from the outside because you're working them within the seam allowance. So just work round as far as you can and then sew that together. So you can see this section is left unstitched. But don't worry about that. That's supposed to happen. And it will look like this. So now you can see I've sewn all those four layers together within the seam allowance, making sure that nothing's caught in and work all the way around and repeat that to do the other side of the bag in the same way. Finishing the bag. So once you've sewn the lining ends to the outer ends, just turn them out, right sides out, so you're pushing the outer through the lining just on each end. They're easy to do because you've got that gap that you left. And once you've done that, find the turning gap in the lining. And then turn the bag right sides out through that turning gap. It's quite easy to do because the turning gap's nice and big, so you can just push it all right sides out without straining the seams. Push out the ends. And now you can see there's the zip at the top and all the ends are pulled out. But we're not going to open it up just yet because we're going to close the turning gap. So take the edges of the turning gap that you pressed under earlier and pin them together. If you find that they've come unpressed or unfolded whilst you're doing all the sewing and the turning, just press them back under into place. And remember they're pressed under by half an inch. And then matching up those folded under ends, pin the turning gap closed all the way along the edge. Just make sure that the folded under ends match up.
and then you need to stitch this close. Now you can either slip stitch it by hand if you put that hand finished look or you can just top stitch it by machine very close to the folded edge. That's what I've done. I've just top stitched mine so the turning gap is now closed. Now all you've got to do now is turn the bag right sides out. So you've sewn in the you've sewn in the handle, you've sewn in the zip, you've sewn in the ends. I like to give mine a little press at this stage just to make sure that the circular ends are staying right on the edge. If you lay it flat and with the seam on the edge, you can do that. And your weekend bag is now finished. You can see the lining, it's got a beautiful lining inside. The ends are all held in because of that method we use to sew the lining to the outers so that they stay inside with the zip. Again, don't forget to press the ends just to give it a neat finish, but use a cool iron. And your weekend bag is now finished. All you've got to do now is make the matching shoulder pad that you can wrap around the edge to make it more comfortable for carrying. Making the shoulder pad. Take the shoulder pad outer and the shoulder pad lining, making sure the top edges are at the top and remove the labels, place them right sides facing. Now on the bottom edge, you need to mark a two inch turning gap. So if you measure the center of the bottom edges and then measure one inch either side of that, that's the two inch turning gap. You can now pin the two pieces together. Make sure all the raw edges are matching up and pin together all the way round. They're exactly the same size, so they will meet up nicely. But it's just important that you make sure that the top edges are matching the top edges, just so that the prints lay in the same direction. Now sew it together all the way around, starting and finishing either side of the turning gap, so that's left unstitched. And then it will look like this. You can see the gap I've left unstitched. Now you need to clip the corners because when you turn it right sides out, you don't want any bulk here. So if you clip across the corner and then cut a little section off either side, that just helps to reduce the fabric bulk in the corners. And it means you'll get nice right angled points when you turn it right sides out. So cut across the corner and then a little snip either side of it. Now turn the whole shoulder pad right sides out. If you put your fingers inside and grab hold of one of the bottom corners, you can easily pull it right sides out. Now using your fingers, push out all of the corners. Just so that you can make sure they're lying right on the edge. And then you can push out those cor corners as well using a, a pointed but not sharp instrument. There's lots of different turning tools you can use. And then once you've pushed out the corners so they're nice at right angle, give it a good press. Then top stitch all the way around the edge. This will neaten it but also hold that turning gap closed. And then it will look like this. You can see I've got nice neat corners. Now what you need to do now is overlap the two pieces together. So we'll overlap the top edge on top of the bottom edge by one inch. So if you measure down one inch from the bottom edge, you can overlap the top edge on top and then clip it together either side. This just makes sure that you've got the right overlap. Now these ends need to be attached together. You could use press fasteners or Velcro, but I've used cam snaps of mine just because I like the look of them and they're quite easy to attach. So once they're attached, it will look like this. So you've got three on the top and three on the bottom, or I say you could use Velcro instead. Once your shoulder pad is finished, to attach it, put the two handles together and then wrap the shoulder pad around them and clip them together. Again, you could use press fasteners. You could even attach buttons on top to decorate the press fasteners if you don't like the look of them. And then roll it round and this will hold the two handles together to make it comfier when carrying and also keep them together so it sits on your shoulder. If you don't want to have them attached together when you want to open your bag, just unclip it and then roll the shoulder pad and clip it round just one handle and then it's there ready for when you want to clip the handles together again. So that's your shoulder pad all finished. So your, your weekend bag is now complete. It's got beautiful, super soft velvet. 
all the prints are done so that they're positioned in exactly the right places. The double slider zip means that you can open it from the centre out, which means easy access and a bit safer too. Lovely cotton lining with your internal zip and the everything is held neatly inside. And your weekend bag is now ready to take away for your special break. <laughs>